What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's Radformational video about super cool stuff on the Rad Potential YouTube channel. We are going to talk about the difference between the three FB models. Okay, we're going to leave all of the SA stuff out of this video. That's a whole deal of its own. They're weird. Just consider an SA and SA. Don't worry about GS, 10th and whatever, all the crap. We're going straight to FB, okay? FB. Now, within FB, y'all should already know this. 81 to 83 is different from 84 to 85. The cars we're going to compare today are going to be 84 to 85. We're not going to look at an 81 to 83 car because I don't have one. So, 84 to 85. The one thing to note, just the major difference, you can, most of this stuff will be the same for, for the GS and GSL that came out in 80, 81 to 83, but the main difference is just the dash, the dash is a different shape, and then there's a bunch of other stuff, but that's the easiest way to tell if someone's like, oh, I got an 82, but you look at the dash and it's definitely a late model. So, getting into it, 84 to 85, you had three submodels of RX-7. You had a GS, a GSL, and a GSLSE. Now, the GS and the GSL both have the same wheel bolt pattern, and the GSLSC had 4x1 14.3. The other one's 4x1 10. So, your GS and your GSL also came with a 12A rotary with a carburetor. All of them. If your GSL has a 13B in it, somebody else put it there, and Mazda did not do that. For both of those, there were automatic and manual options. Five speed versus I think it's a three speed automatic. The engine bay looks a lot like this, except it would have a carburetor on it. So you got nice little 12A, some rat's nest stuff in there, which is the emissions stuff. Um, ignition coils are over here, radiator. You're gonna have a beehive oil cooler just like this one. Um, and you'll have this fancy bottle over here, which is start assist thing, the Beehive oil cooler. On a 13B car, i.e. a GSLSC, came with a fuel injected 13B. Okay, both 84 and 85, the GSLSC did. Let me prop this hood up once. Now, with the 13B, you're gonna notice there's no Beehive oil cooler. That cold start assist bottle's still over there. And if you look at this radiator, it's different. So, the radiator is different because there is a front mount oil cooler up here, right in front of the radiator. These two bolts here bolt this front mount oil cooler up in here. So you can see it chilling right there. Now, if you try to put the front mount oil cooler from a GSLSC in your GS or GSL, it will not fit. The radiators are different. Be aware of that. The mounts are different. Everything's just a little bit different down there. Okay? So, you can see this car still has the bracket for it, so you might be able to figure it out. But, just keep that in mind. Now, other differences. On a GSLSC, you could get power steering. I have yet to see a 12A car with power steering. So if you do have one, let me know, but I've never seen one. As far as horsepower-wise between the two engines, 100% they're both slow. Now, what's going to make a GSLSE feel faster is these cars have a 410 axle ratio, so 4.10, and a GSL, or a GS regular one, has a 3.9 axle ratio. Staying with the rear end topic, a GSLSE has a limited slip and disc brakes in the back, but they're bigger and they're vented. A GSL has a limited slip in the rear, the 3.9 gear ratio, disc brakes in the back, but they are not vented. Okay, a GSL rear disc brake is not vented. A GS, the base model, has drum brakes and it's an open diff. So the GS and the GSL both are 3.9. So you can kind of play around with your gear ratios and the GSLC is a 410. The 410 is going to make it feel mega faster and it has a horsepower. You know, this one probably makes 130 wheel horsepower, right? A stock GSLC motor. 
the GSO, which is the 12A, or your GS, the 12A cars, are going to make maybe 100 to the tire. Okay, Noticeable difference. The 12A is a little more peaky. The 13B is going to have some torque. And this is the factory GSOSE EFI setup. It's two injectors. It's got a little ECU in the passenger floorboard, and it says REEGI on the top. Don't let this GSLSE confuse you. It is five lug. It's custom converted the whole deal. And I can show you over here the difference between the two brake calipers on the front. So you're going to see the caliper brackets are different. The rotor itself is actually pretty much the same diameter. Um, however, the GSLSE rotor is much, much bigger in the center and does not have like a floating hub with the little guide plate and stuff between them. So, both cars, GS, GSLC, GSL, you could get a sunroof option for all of them, if I recall correctly. Your GSL and GSLC, you could get an optional glass sunroof. Um, the GSLCs are basically the fully optioned out car. So it would come with a rear wiper, it would come with power mirrors, it would come with power windows. Um, it comes with a better radio, so you're gonna get the equalizer thing. Um, and all that stuff. There's an amplifier behind the seats. The GSL cars would have manual windows, um, or manual windows. Some, well, actually, some GSLs had power windows. So it was an option. Some of them would have power mirrors. It was an option. They would have manual mirrors, manual windows, the whole deal. Now, moving to the interior, this is where we're going to see some substantial differences between the two. <laughs> And by the two, basically we're just comparing a regular FB, so your GS and GSL, to the GSLC. So if I'm saying GSL versus GSLC, just know that it's, it's both of those. Anyways, so here is your GSL interior. So the door panels, very simple. The seats are all one style of cloth. Your dash setup, very similar to a GSLC. However, the AC controls are cable controlled on the 84 and uh, you're gonna have a choke lever down here um, the power window switch would be somewhere by the choke this one is a slick top also no power rear wiper steering wheels are all the same so the GSLSE much nicer interior the dash same outer shell same shape the door panels totally different. They have a uh, insert in the center right here and this insert um, on a leather interior option car would be rolled leather in there. The seats, different material for the bolstering in the center. They're also much more comfortable and like just nicer than a GSL or like a base model seat. Um, the dash itself is very much the same however you're gonna see the uh, choke plug, your power mirror switch um, as you move towards the center, the HVAC controls are all electronic, no cable driven anything. And here you can see sunroof, rear interior is pretty much the same, but it does have a wiper on it. Um, here's your power window switches. The thing that would go here is actually a, uh, it's an equalizer. Not, well no, not an equalizer. It's like a, it controls your left to right balance and your forward and rear fade. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see, what else is really majorly different? You do get on a GSLSC, you get this super awesome badge on the back that says GSLSC. The exhaust is noticeably different, the tips are different. Um, dual tips looks fast. And, uh, and yeah, that's really, there's nothing too, too crazy different between the two. Um, Besides like the, the suspension stuff. Now, getting into that suspension stuff, the, the brakes are bigger on a GSLC, bigger just as in like the pad area is a little longer. Um, the rotors are thicker and, and better vented in the front. The springs are a lot stiffer on a GSLC versus a regular GSL. Um, here's another SC car that I have here so you can see just a different interior. This is red. They tend to fade pretty good so you can see your color difference there, red seats, difference in uh, in uh, material as well. This one does have a brown steering wheel and a red car, but no big deal, and all that. So, 
good stuff. Now, um, let's see, what else really is there? Yeah, I mean, that is about it. So, like I said, main things, 12A, 13B, you get the cool badge. They're both, you know, gonna have the same body. Um, so basically like your, your molded bumpers and fenders. Um, the SAs, the old ones have steel bumpers and that's kind of a whole different video in and of itself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different car. Now, getting into super more details now that I just remembered it. The fuel tanks are different between the two. So a 12A fuel tank um, does, a 12A fuel tank does not have a baffle around the pickup tube. The GSLC does. On a GSLC, the fuel pickup tube is actually a half inch in diameter. And on a 12A tank, it is 3 8 The return line on a GSLC is 3 8 versus on a um, GSL 12A car, it is 5 16 um, let's see, I think that's pretty much it, really, maybe. Both op both cars could get optioned with cruise control, both cars could get optioned with AC. Um, your GSLC will have a big air box in the right front corner, this one doesn't have it, but it would be right there. Um, the Bearing sizes, wheel bearing sizes for 84 and 85 are the same, 81 to 83 are small bearing, um, but that's not really a GSLC difference. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So, if you do go and you're buying an FB, the 84 to 85 car, try to find a GSLC. I would say they're pretty rare, but... If you can find a, a first gen anyways, you can probably find a GSLC car. A lot of cars, you will find FB 12A cars that do have the GSLC wheels and hubs and all that stuff swapped onto them because that is a popular upgrade. Gets you that limited slip, that um, better drive, final drive ratio, um, that sort of stuff. I haven't noticed any noticeable differences in the transmissions. They're still basically the same transmission between the 5-speed 12A transmission and a 5-speed 13B transmission. Um, it's not like Turbo 2 and stuff where the flywheels are different or anything. It's, it's pretty much the same. Let's see, what else? Oh, another thing. The drive shaft on a GSLC, your pinion flange, is different. So, I think though, for an 84 to 85, since they're all big bearing, the pinion flange is the same. But if you have an 81 to 83 car, the pinion flange is small like the SA, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I really think that's about it. The, the SE cars are super cool, um, super nice. Interiors are just a lot nicer. The leather usually comes all apart. But... This day and age, if you can find a good clean first gen, it's something to get. Doing body work and rust repair and stuff on these is not that fun. So I mostly shop for chassis condition before I shop for options. Um, you can always find nice seats people are selling or giving them away. Giving them away. Um, you can always, I'd say you can always find wheels and stuff for them too, but these cars are getting pretty rare these days, so it it is getting tough to, uh, tough to get parts. But... Uh, um, the last bit here, as far as weight, alright, so, as far as weight goes, between the two chassis, you're going to see extra weight because of power windows, heavier brakes, and all that stuff. So here's the knowledge I can give you to compare the weights. Death Trap, which you've just seen in the prior video, weighs 2,380 pounds. That car has power windows, turbo 2 seats, and then has a full turbo drivetrain, five lug, the whole deal. Now, another car, which you haven't seen on the channel unless you followed us to Deals Gap two years ago, Sheba, a white turbo two swap first gen, they're both 78 SAs, has power, or not power, Sheba, a white 79 or 78 first gen, full turbo two swap, has manual windows, SA seats, it has a bride seat, but still just as light, manual windows, SA seats, no radio, same five look swap as Death Trap, all that jazz, and it is 2280. So, 100 pounds comes in your doors, bigger seats. The rest of the stuff, radio, dash, wiper, other things would probably add weight too. 
13B, maybe another 20 pounds. So you do the, do the math there, figure out the extra weight. But that's just a fun fact to, uh, to consider as well. So with that, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Subscribe over here if you wanna see some more fun rotary content or just some cool design process engineering content on the Rad Potential YouTube channel. We appreciate your subscription if we have earned it. And I wanna thank you guys again for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Keep it wrapped.